The autumn wind is a pirate, blustering in from sea. With a rollicking song, he sweeps along, swaggering boisterously. His face is weather-beaten. He wears a hooded sash with a silver hat about his head and a bristling black mustache. All right, gentlemen, welcome to Press Pass Live. Another night, another episode. And we have the full crew back, so we're all here. Welcome in my guests, Winnivis and Dog. Gentlemen, welcome back. I'm glad to be back. Good to be back for another week, Glad to be off the call. Yeah, and for you two trading call. Dog just got lucky. Yep. Yay. Uh, got the dreaded week of call, so... All right, well, it's just us, so let's hop right on in there. Let me catch you up from where we left off last time. I think we are uh, – let me pull up the schedule here. That will help. I think we are in week uh, 14, if you can correct me if I'm wrong. And I think when we left off last time, we were in week 10. So let me catch you up with weeks 11 through 13. Weeks 11, the Giants take out the Eagles 34 to 10. The Lions with a 38 to 17 victory over the Falcons. The 49ers with a 28-3 victory over the Packers. The Bills stand strong at home and win 24-10 against the one-win Dolphins who struggled this year. The Redskins come out good against the Cowboys, 20-9. The Cardinals victorious over the Colts, 42-10. The Chiefs with a 37-10 victory over the Chargers. The Panthers beating up on their division rival. The Buccaneers 31 to 10. The Steelers in the game of the week. This was one of the best games that happened with a 35 to 21 victory as they run away with that one late. The Browns moved to 7 and 5 with a 24 and 10 victory over the Ravens. The Rams with a 23 to 9 victory over the Jaguars. The Jets beat up on my Saints 20 to 14. The Bears with a big victory over the Vikings 27. To 17. I'm sure we'll be talking about that game later tonight. The Broncos with a 28 to 21 victory over the Raiders. The Bengals with a 20 to 17 victory over the Texans. And the Titans wrap up the week with a 42 to nothing win over the Seahawks. That moves you over to Week 12, where the Colts take out the 49ers, 17 to 14. The Vikings bounce back after the loss to the Bears, 34 to three. The Cardinals with a 26-6 victory over the Rams. The Steelers whip up on the Packers, 42-10. The Panthers with a 19-6 victory over the Jets. And the Cowboys with a 49-21 victory over the Eagles. The Falcons and Dolphins decide to play no defense, and they go 44-41 with the Falcons coming out the win at home. The Jaguars with a 23-13 victory over the Chiefs in a shocker that week. The Bengals with a nice win against the Browns, 21 to 17. The Bills with a victory, 23 to 17 over the Broncos. The Lions with a 34 to 9 victory on a sim win for or a sim game, I should say, 34 to 9 over the Bears. The Texans with a 20 to 13 victory over the Seahawks. The Buccaneers with a nice win over the Giants, 22 to 17. The Patriots mop up with my Saints, 34 to 7. The Raiders with a good victory, 21 to 19 over the Chargers. The Ravens show the Titans what's up with a sim victory, 49 to 14. You gotta love Madden and these sim victories. And then we're gonna catch up at week 13, 73 to nothing. Thank you, Madden 16. You got that right. The Rams with a 24 <laughs> to nothing win over the Seahawks. The Eagles beat up on my Saints, 17 to zero. The Vikings showing the Ravens what's up 35 to nothing as that team seems to be rolling. The Bears on a roll 31 to 21 over the Panthers. The Buccaneers 38. The Dolphins 16. The Jaguars with a 28 to 14 victory over the Bengals. The Redskins with a 42 to 13 victory over the Chargers. The Falcons with a 36 to 35 victory over the Bills. That was a really close one and a good one. The Cowboys fall to the Chiefs 25-19 to as the Chiefs bounce back after a, a rough couple of weeks there. The Browns with a field goal win 27-24 to over the Raiders. Uh, the Patriots with a 20-17 to victory over the Broncos and another game of the week, another classic. The Cardinals with a 30-23 to victory over the Texans. 
The Giants with a 31-7 victory over the Packers. The Colts win 17-10 over the struggling Jets. And finally, the Steelers win 38-24 over the Lions. And that catches us up to where we're at tonight. It looks like we've got three games going on right now. Um, and I think that the Cardinals were just playing, so they probably just wrapped that up. So it's been a fun week here in the Grown Folks Madden League. Let's bounce back. Take a look at Week 13. Dogs, give me your upset from Week 13. My upset for uh, Week 13 was the Bears beating the Panthers 31-21. to uh, I don't know that it's an upset. A win has kind of found his stride there in Chicago. Only I think the only game he's lost was a uh, sim game against the line. So uh, you had Andy Dalton, 13 of 20 for 240 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. So he's got Dalton um, not turning the ball over, which is key in uh, getting these victories. Reynaldo Ball, the, the running back that he really likes, even back to uh, the 49ers days, 13 carries, 95 yards for two touchdowns. The uh, Kevin White, three catches for 109 yards. He did have a 92-yard touchdown, so that made up for most of his yardage there. Uh, Alshon Jeffrey, five catches, 97 yards. On the defensive side of the ball for the Bears, Perno McPhee turned in a sack. Cam Chancellor, six tackles, and uh, had an interception to go with it. Uh, Cam Newton, we've seen this in some of the games that uh, the Panthers have have struggled in and, and taken losses. Uh, 19 of 31 for 326 yards, but he did throw three interceptions. Um, one of those was returned down to the three-yard line, eventually punched in by the Bears. Um, Christian Michael, uh, only 11 carries, 50 yards, and a touchdown. That's a guy that we talked about last week that if he, I feel like if he got the ball a little bit more, you know, he, he could be in that top tier of running backs in the league. Uh, only 11 carries, though, so it's hard hard to do that with 11 carries. Um, on the receiving side, Calvin Johnson, three catches, 95 yards. Uh, Kelvin Benjamin, six catches, 93, 93 yards. And Greg Olson, six catches, 96 yards. So it was an all-out passing attack for the Panthers. Big win for the Bears at home. Well, my upset for Week 13 was uh, the Jaguars uh, taking care of business and, and bringing down a Bengals team that really, really needed a W to continue to chase after that wild card in the AFC. They win 28-14. to 14. Blake Bortles uh, did not have a very beautiful game, but he turns in a W. Uh, finishes out 13-23, to 23, 244 yards, and a touchdown to go with two picks. Uh, I think the emergence of T.J. Yeldon, uh, was phenomenal in this game. 19 carries, a buck 25, uh, had a touchdown on the day as well. Uh, Jordan Tobman also had six carries, 45 yards, and a touchdown. And who said Muhammad Sanu was good? He was looking forward to playing those Bengals, and he lights them up four catches, 122 yards, and a touchdown against his former team. Defensively, Dante Fowler Jr. only had one tackle on the day, but it was a sack. Uh, Demetrius McCray, McCray had a forced fumble, and Matt Lockett had a interception. For the Bengals, A.J. McCarron is having some growing pains, 13 of 29, 208 with a touchdown and a pick. Uh, A.J. McCarron was also the only person to actually score a touchdown rushing the ball, so that's never a good sign. Leader there, eight carries, 34 yards with, for Jeremy Hill. Uh, Receptions-wise, A.J. Green was the leader, six catches, 63 yards, uh, but Rod Streeter had the only touchdown on an 81-yard strike. And defensively, Ray Maluga had an interception, and so did Buster Screen for the losing Bengals, but that's a tough one to lose whenever you're fighting for a wild card in a very, very, very tight AFC. All right, well, give me your player of the week, your offensive player of the week for week 13 win. Uh, my offensive player of the week uh, was going to come out of the Buffalo-Atlanta game. It's going to be Matt Ryan. Uh, I watched a good bit of this last game, last quarter of this game, and uh, Matt Ryan just uh, – Matty Ice, he earned the nickname. He threw – uh, both his touchdowns came late, uh, finished out 22 of 30 in that football game, 345 yards and two touchdowns, and led his team to a victory when in reality he had no business winning that game. Uh, but the Falcons steal one from the uh, from the Bills. And that, for that, Matty Ice, Matt Ryan is my player of the week for Week 13 offensively. Dogs, what you got? 
On the offensive side of the ball, uh, Elijah Green, I went with the, the rookie receiver for the Cleveland Browns. The Browns beat the Raiders 27-24. to Green was a first-round pick, 15th overall out of UCLA. He hauled in five receptions for 171 yards and a touchdown on the on the game. So big game for him, kind of a breakout there. You look at his season, he's got 25 catches for 541 yards, five touchdowns on the season. So this was a big game for, for Green. And uh, if, it, if he can uh, be a, a good threat opposite of Josh Gordon there, the Browns got a serious – a serious passing attack going. Yeah, the Browns are really good about passing the ball. He always has been since he's joined the league. So let's flip it to the other side of the ball. Dogs, why don't you start this one off? Give me your defensive player of the week for week 13. Defensive player of the week came out of the Giants-Packers game. The Giants with a 31-7 to victory. Um, you can probably guess where I'm going here. Uh, Jason Pierre-Paul, three tackles, two sacks. That puts him at 17 sacks on the year. Guys having an unbelievable season for the Giants. He's a one-man wrecking crew on that defensive line. He could get the 20-sack mark pretty easily this season. We'll have to keep an eye on that in the coming weeks. Win. who you got for your defensive player of the week? I took a, I took a key from the 24-0 the to win by the, by the Rams over the Seahawks, and I went with cornerback Najee Terry, the second-year player out of Kentucky. Uh, wasn't very good on the statute as far as tackles, but they don't pay him to tackle. They pay him to intercept the ball, and he had two interceptions in that game of the four thrown by Russell Wilson. So leading his team to a shutout of the Seahawks, I got to name Najee Terry, the cornerback, my player of the week for the St. Louis Rams. And it's funny because he uh, he just cries about how terrible his cornerbacks are. So it's uh, it's good to get a little recognition. I know that he loves listening to the show. and uh, I'll trade probably- my cornerbacks for his. He'll probably catch a little stiffy now that he's know that we have talked about him tonight. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at our standings, and uh, we're going to take a look at the AFC West. We've been looking at the AFC and bouncing around and taking different divisions. Um, and so let's take a look at the AFC West. i got to pull up the right thing here. All right, there we go, Nate. you got to hit the right button. So in the <laughs> AFC West right now, we have the Kansas City Chiefs who've taken a step back this year. Of course, last year they were on a roll. They made a deep playoff run. They've taken a step back to the crowd this year. They're at 7-5. and five. Had a couple of rough losses, uh, but bounced back in Week 13 with a big victory. The Denver Broncos are hanging in there tough. They're at 7-6. and six. Uh, The San Diego Chargers are just barely holding on with a little glimmer of hope at 5-7. and seven. When I know that you have some personal experience with that team, one of the 55 teams that you've coached here in the league. And then the Oakland Raiders are still not quite out of it at 4-8. and eight. You would think at 4-8 and eight your season's pretty much over, but they're technically still in there. Let's go ahead and start this off with win. You've played in the AFC West. Tell me, who do you think the best team is in the AFC West this year? I think until you dethrone them, you have to side with the champs, and I'm going to go with the Kansas City Chiefs. The main reason is Geno Smith, and the Geno Coaster apparently is on the higher end and is staying on the high end. Uh, uh, While he's tailed off a little bit from his hot start, he's still completing over 67% of his passes on the year for almost 3,500 yards, 27 touchdowns, and 18 interceptions. Uh, Still a phenomenal job by Geno. Uh, done by Geno Smith and uh, Coach Havoc over there. Uh, the running game isn't what it was last year. Jamal Charles kind of had a little bit of a down year, but he still has 13 touchdowns, which is nothing to sneeze at at all. Uh, I think overall, though, that that offense uh, gets it done. I think Coach Havoc gets it done. And I, like I said, until you dethrone them, they're still the champs. I, I have to go with the Chiefs being the best team in the, uh, in the AFC West. Uh, Dogs, what do you think, though? I'm going to go against you there a little bit. Nothing against the Chiefs. They're a great team. Uh, sh- certainly put a beat down on my Jets. I'm going to go uh, uh, with the Broncos. You look at the Broncos sitting at 7-6. and six. A Big win this week over the Eagles. Uh, just looking at the remaining schedule, you got uh, on the road, they go to Miami to play the 1-11 and Dolphins. You got to figure that's probably a win. Then they got two division games, but both at home to end the season. So you got Oakland at four and eight, San Diego to end the season five and seven. I got the Broncos winning out, finishing ten and six, making the playoffs. Uh, you look at their, you look at their, their uh, stats on the year. You got Aaron Rodgers, 
who came over from the Packers, of course, having a good season. Would like to see the turnovers come down. He's got 18 interceptions to 25 touchdowns, right at 3,000 yards for the year, completing almost 60% of his passes. Uh, Arian Foster having a big season for him. Who would have thought that? 176 attempts for uh, 887 yards, just five yards of carry, five touchdowns. He's got receivers just, I mean, coming out everywhere. Demarius Thomas, 40 catches. Cody Latimer, uh, 33 catches. Ladarius Green, 28 catches. Connor Rucker, 36 catches. I mean, he's just got weapons everywhere. Look on the defensive side, Von Miller, 50 tackles, four sacks, forced fumble, two interceptions. I'm I'm looking for the the Broncos to finish it out strong, ten and six Broncos in the playoffs. So nobody's going with the Raiders, huh? Not going to venture out on that branch. Uh, I will, I will stay safely on my branch that I'm on. It, it's it's amazing since our last show. Uh, it looks like um, it looks like Aaron Rodgers has struggled a little bit since our last show. I mean he. He was having a really good season, but that percentage has come down a little bit. Those interceptions have went up. And though Arian Foster has an amazing season going, those numbers have kind of come back to reality lately. Uh, that average is back down where you would think it would be. Uh, of course, he was having such an amazing season. But the Denver Broncos is an interesting pick, and you can't count out the Kansas City Chiefs. Let's talk about some playoff teams now. Of course, the playoffs are heating up. They're right around the corner. These playoff races are really coming to fine-tune themselves. But let's talk about teams that you feel like are going to stumble and fall. Right now, you've got the Patriots, the Steelers, the Titans, the Chiefs, the Bengals, and the Browns are all in the playoff hunt with the Jets, the Broncos, and the Texans right there on the bubble. On the AFC, NFC, you have the Cardinals, the Panthers, the Redskins, the Vikings, the Buccaneers, the Giants with the Eagles, Rams, and Lions all on the bubble. Tell me one team that you feel like is in that lead, in that playoff hunt, that's going to falter and fall and fall away and not even make the playoffs by the end of the year. Let me know what you think, dogs. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Bengals on that one. Uh, the Bengals sitting at 7-5 and five, currently in the playoffs. Uh, tough loss last week to uh, Jacksonville. Um the main reason I'm going with the Bengals here, you look at their schedule down the stretch. They got a home game this week against the Vikings. The Vikings 8-4 and four and playing some really good ball here the last couple of weeks. Then uh, you're going to travel to Pittsburgh. That's going to be a tough one always. Uh, you finish up with two two home games. So you think, well, you got two home games to finish the season. Could be two wins, but not so fast there because you got the Titans and the Steelers coming in in back-to-back weeks. So four games remaining, you're playing uh, the Steelers twice, the defending champs. It's going to be tough to get in for the Bengals. you got the Titans leading their division, the Vikings leading theirs. So really, really tough schedule to end it for, for Cincinnati. I could, I could see them at best maybe winning two of those, and I don't think nine wins get you in the AFC. I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to go out on a limb, and I'm going to say that the Tennessee Titans will not make the playoffs, and I'll tell you why. Same reasoning that dogs just use, scheduling. Uh, right now, the game is going on right now, so I don't know how this is going on, but right now he is playing the Arizona Cardinals, who are a tough team to play no matter who you are. Uh, Nolan plays phenomenal football out there. He's got that team at 11-1 and one right now. That is a tough game for anybody. And then you think, well, okay, yeah, but he's, he's going to lighten up a little bit. Well, the next week he goes against a very, very stout and, and proven now Texans team uh, with an owner that's mean in business. He's playing tough. And that's a division game. Uh, that could be tough. It is a home game for Tennessee, but that's still going to be a tough matchup. Then, as uh, Dogs talked about, the Bengals. I think the Bengals are going to be hungry, especially if they come in limping a little bit. They might be either looking to play spoiler or just prove that they still got some life left in them. And then you finish off with the Rams, who in the NFC side are going to be looking for a potential playoff spot there as well. Those are not four gimme games. If they win two of them, they'll get in. But I could see them easily losing all four of them and falling out of the NFC, or the AFC South. I'm going to say the Titans trip and fall because they get a little bit cocky at the end and they get caught from behind. Yeah, I think that his last two weeks have both been simulated games. Uh, one was a loss and one was a win. 
Um, it just goes to show you that just missing one or two games and having them simulate it, that uh, you're leaving a lot to chance, and uh, they could come back and haunt you, and that might be exactly what happens to him as uh, his season starts to wrap up. And I would like to see how this game is going. Maybe we could check that in before tonight is over with. Let's talk about Ryan Shazier really quick, middle linebacker, of course, uh, for the Pittsburgh Steelers. 61 tackles, two sacks, a forced fumble, and five interceptions, playing extremely well. Answer this question when, is he the real deal? Um, Without a doubt, when you play middle linebacker for the defending GFML champs, uh, you obviously bring something to the table. And Ryan Shazier right now is the heart and soul of that defense for uh, for that dude over there in uh, Pittsburgh. He plays phenomenal defense. He, he plays a very controlled game. Uh, I haven't played him personally, but I've seen him play a couple of guys. And uh, he's very patient. And on defense, he's very opportunistic. And Shazier helps with that, with his speed and his ability to get after the quarterback and to play coverage. Uh, Ryan Shazier is definitely the real deal. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree 100% with everything you just said. The guy can absolutely play. You look at a, a middle linebacker with five picks on the year. Uh, that's uh, that's really good. One forced fumble, two sacks. Uh, that dude out there in Pittsburgh, he, he really he plays really well with his linebackers. He plays great in coverage. He's good in the run. He's just an all-around great player on defense. And uh, what better guy to, to have leading your defense than Ryan Shazier? Yeah, he's tailed off just a slight bit here as the season's progressed. So it, it'll be interesting to see if he can kind of carry some of that momentum off into the playoffs. But, hey, an 85 overall, 24-year-old linebacker making these kind of plays, that's uh, going to set your defense up for a nice little run. Let's take a look at the schedule really quick. Look at week 14, of course, but we have no clue what going on in them we do have some games already played the Jets beat up on the Buccaneers 28 to 20 the Broncos with the same score on the Eagles 28 to 20 the Texans with a 31 to 24 victory over the Bills but I want each of you we're going to start with dogs this time I want you to give me uh, a lock them down and let them loose give me a lock of the week and a upset of the week uh, for week 14. Lock of the week uh, this one was pretty easy for me I got the Patriots uh, at home against the Raiders. I, I don't see I don't see the Patriots struggling at all with that one. Guy's got a really good team. He um, usually handles his business on the field. I look for the Patriots. At, that, that's my lock of the week, hands down. Um, looking at the looking at the upsets, um, I'm going to go Seahawks at home against the Colts. Look at uh, Daddy League's pred- predicting the Colts with a one-point victory, so I'm going to go against Daddy League's there. Uh, Seahawks, Seahawks got a really good defense. If he can get Russell Wilson going, he he's definitely got a chance to win that one. So upset of the week, Seahawks win at home versus the Colts. I think on mine, I'm going to go with my lock, uh, the, the Washington Redskins in a fight for the uh, NFC East. I think they have a really solid game against the San Francisco 49ers who are struggling a little bit, maybe looking forward to next year. Uh, I think they may be looking for that high draft pick, maybe kind of restock that team again in year two of the uh, rebuild there. I think the Redskins can handle business and kind of keep control of the NFC East. And on the upset, this is actually more of a hope than anything, but I'm going to be rooting personal personal interest wise. I'm going to pick the Packers to overtake Junior and the Lions. That game is going on right now, but I'm rooting for Green Bay to maybe get me an upset and help out my Bears a little bit. So that's my upset of the week. Green Bay is still one of the most uh, underrated teams in the league. He, he just doesn't play up to his potential. But when he's clicking, that is a very, very good team. So that will be an interesting game to maybe check in on a little later. All right, let's talk about a couple of teams that are on the bubble. Right now you got the Jets, the Broncos, the Texans on the bubble in the AFC. you got the Eagles, the Rams, the Lions on the bubble in the NFC. There's even a couple more teams that are mathematically not out of it. Dog, why don't we start with you this time? Why don't you give me – one player on one of these teams that you feel like is going to really lead his team to the playoffs. 
Yeah, I went with uh, Decatur Thomas running back for Tampa Bay. I think De- Decatur Thomas is a huge part of their offense when you look at his stats. Leading the GFML in, in rushing this season with 211 carries, 1,213 yards, uh, seven touchdowns on the season. He's also good out of the backfield, 28 catches, 191 yards and a touchdown. Played the guy last night. He is trucking my defensive linemen who are no slouches. Uh, Great, great player. He's going to lead Tampa Bay into the playoffs without a doubt. Well, my pick for – for who's going to carry their team in the playoffs is actually my 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 third wheel here. I guess not really third wheel. Uh, I'm going to go with Niall Davis and the New York Jets. Uh, main reasoning is pretty doggone easy. He's the second leading rusher in the GFML with 1,151 yards at 6.1 yards a clip. If you watch any games with dogs, he relies on that run game, and Nile Davis is a power guy who can also get around the edge. The guy can do it all as long as he stays healthy. I think Nile Davis, you put it on his back, let him get 20 to 25 carries a game, and he will win the Jets some enough games to get them in the playoffs. Give me Nile Davis. Yeah, those are two really good young running backs that will be a, a pain in a lot of defensive side here in the Grown Folks Mad League as we kind of move forward here. Here, let's talk to, about uh, playoffs to stay in that vein, so to speak. And uh, as we wrap up the show here, this will be our last little subject that we hit. Why don't you talk about teams that are absolutely done? It's over for them. They might as well not even come back and keep playing. Tell me a team that you feel like is absolutely done. They're not going to make a run. It's over for them. Why don't we start with you, Wynn? Uh, my team that I'm going to go ahead and stick a fork in right now uh, is uh, might be a little bit of a surprise. I'm going to stick a fork in the Cleveland Browns. Uh, my main reasoning for that is, like with the other game, with the other teams we've talked about tonight, has been scheduling. Uh, they face in order going the last four games of the season. They face the Steelers, they face the Vikings, they face the Colts, and they face the Jaguars. Now you might think the Colts and the Jaguars are a little bit lighter in the pants. You might think, ah, oh, well that's not too bad. The Colts will probably be gunning for a playoff spot at that point, potentially, or at least wanting to play spoiler. And the Jaguars, since the new owner has taken over, I've heard lots of good things about his team. He's got that team clicking right now. Uh, he beat the Bengals last week, 28-14. to I think with their schedule they've got coming up, I could easily see them losing all four of those games because I could see all those teams shutting down Josh Gordon. And unless he can use Elijah Green like he did last week, uh, I think that coach there in Cleveland might be done. I'm going to stick a fork in the Cleveland Browns. Dogs, uh, who do you want to stick a fork in? Yeah, I'm going to stick a fork in the Philadelphia Eagles. You look at the Eagles right there in the playoff race. Uh, coming off a tough loss to the Broncos, 28-20 to in Week 14. Looking at their schedule going down the stretch. You got a game you can win against San Francisco. You got a home game there, so possibly get that eighth win. Um, last two games finish out the season on the road at Washington, on the road at Kansas City. Washington's going to be looking to wrap up the division with a win there. And Kansas City could be possibly fighting for a playoff spot. Either way, Kansas City handles the Eagles. Washington beats the Eagles. Only winnable game to me on that schedule is the 49ers. Going to have to get that one. I don't think eight wins get you in. So I am sticking a fork in the Philadelphia Eagles. Here's two teams that you can stick a fork in. It's the New Orleans Saints and the Chicago Bears because just like uh, Wynn and I, our seasons are done. And just like our show, you can stick a fork in our seasons. Dogs win. It has been another great show, another great couple weeks here in Grown Folks. It is amazing that we are probably going to be halfway through all of the games after tonight is done with, and it's only day one, so we may have another early advance on our hands. Thank you again so much for being here, for your insight, for pouring into the Grown Folks Mad League. It has been a pleasure. We're going to get this all edited and post it and let everybody listen to it. We even had a caller here tonight. Don't even know who you are, but we appreciate you calling in and listening. Hopefully next week we'll be able to find somebody that will come and be a part of the show and be a guest and spend some few minutes with us as we talk about their team. So for Winnibus, for Dogs, this is Nate. We're going to peace out. We'll see you on the other side, fellas.